Some people will say it's absurd. I would never pay those prices. It doesn't make sense. And some mm. people, you walk in and they're shopping there every weekend. It's just life. I don't even know how to say how could it be. It's just life, what you believe in, what you can afford, what you feel is valuable. Because, you know, a lot of times we speak about that with certain luxury things. We're like, we actually can't afford it. But it's like, how much do you really want it? That's a good point. Because you could have bought it by now. Like, you you have it there, but you didn't buy it. What's the, what's the hold up? So like, how bad is the... How bad is the... The, the thing that you want. Not even... Whatever that. it is. How bad... Not the how bad do you want it. How bad is it important to you? Like how important is it exactly? To you? How important is it to you? That's a good question. So the importance. So the more important something is, the higher value that you probably you're have probably to, and you're probably it. that you're willing to pay. Maybe mm. the more important it is to you, right? For example, I'm probably not going to pay a certain price for to see let's who let's see Adele in concert. Mm-hmm. Right. But I would probably pay the same price to see Beyonce because she just has a higher value to me. But it's the same price. Yeah. <laughs> They're still both so you know, was, on a higher Adele, level. If Adele was 5K and Beyonce was 5K. Yeah. So it's like for me, because I like Beyonce, then that that's the route I'm going. So it's all personal choice and opinion as to how important you see it is. Obviously, what you can afford. And different personalities, different opinions. And I know something that we always speak about that people just... And that's probably on the episode before this. Um, think that a lot of things are scams and stuff like that. So people don't believe in opening their eyes up to other things. So you know my saying is you don't know what you don't know. So if they're not open to it, then they're never going to see. They're never going to know that I could pay $300 or $3,000 and make a million. Because you just don't believe that it's true. It's just not possible, right? There's a lot that goes into decision making for people. Yeah. But you said that you don't know what you don't know. Right. But once you do know, now you're just being ignorant. You're being, you're choosing to be ignorant. Because if and I show, fine. if I show you, <laughs> because if I tell you is one thing, and then if I show you is another thing, and then somebody else is, somebody else does it, it's a whole nother thing. Right. So you got three, you got three points of entry for you to change your mindset. Not from, I'm not from being a person of lack of knowledge, but being a person of lack of belief. Mm-hmm. It's, it's different. I don't. I don't know it. Okay, now you know it. Now but then now I don't believe you. But I showed you it. Mm-hmm. So now you're choosing to be continuously Maybe you just don't ignorant. Me. Maybe you just continue to not believe me. But then you're saying like I showed you something else. Um, but yeah, I think it just comes down to like the person's belief system, what they want, what they choose to believe in, what they can afford, what. And just the exposure, I think with social media, obviously there's good and bad of things that expose you to what's available to you and what's not. Right. But it's up to you to choose and decide what I want to listen to, when I what I believe, what I don't. So I ain't here to change everybody's mind. So and, where do we get can't so do that? Value system is probably very important. So where does how do you adjust your value system from where you were growing up? Your environment, you networking, age, environment, networking, age, and um I guess however you gain knowledge. Now, that one is tricky because I don't really gain knowledge, to be quite honest. Like, I don't read. I don't listen to podcasts. But I am on social media, and I think I get knowledge from there. I definitely get knowledge from there. Maybe not the New York Times knowledge, but um, I do get some type of knowledge and exposure from there as well. So those are the ways I think that you can change your value system. Networking, environment, age, like growing and just kind of learning, and those things come with it. And then... It's putting yourself out there, however you can like learn more. That's one of the biggest things that we have to do is begin to, I don't want to say change our value system, but we have to monitor it. Be willing to hear outside of it. Like think We got to be willing it. to adjust it and we got to be willing to look into it and say, yeah, this is not who I am or what. Because a lot of times you grow up with this, with this value, like going, mm. this is a conversation around money and values, but I think even growing up, a lot of our I think values. about that with kids. Yeah, our values <laughs> are instilled from us, to us from our parents. Mm-hmm. So if I'm thinking that I have to work hard for money all the time, then that's going to be my value system. Yeah. I'm a hard worker. I go to work. I get a check. I come home. I do the same thing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And my value system is based on what I saw my parents do and what their parents saw and what mm-hmm. their parents saw. There was this, uh, I forgot what he's watching about the, uh, the ham. Mm. So let me. No, we were right. We were at Tim's documentary. So we were at uh, one of our friend's documentaries and he was talking about traditions and values and, um, and um, Tim Jackson, like tr- generational trauma and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So a lot okay. of our, a lot of our traditions, a lot of our values come from our parents. And he was like, there was this story about a Thanksgiving family where they had this ham on a table and one piece of the ham was always cut off. Right. The butt, yeah. So the butt of the ham was always cut off. So the girl came 
the piece of the ham was cut off at the very end. And the husband reminded me of you. The husband was like, why do you cut, cut the, the piece of the ham off? And she's like, oh, you got to you gotta ask my mom. That's the way my mom did it. Mm-hmm. So he went to the mom. The mom was in the kitchen. He's like, hey, mom. Why, he's like, why do you always cut the, the butt of the ham off the very end? He said, oh, that's the way my mom did it. So And her mom was actually there, too. And the mom was there. And her great-grandma was there. So he went to ask the great-grandma. He said, great-grandma, <laughs> why do you cut the butts of the ham off? And she was like, well... I had a small stove and we didn't have enough room to fit it on the, the stove. Back in the day. Back yeah, in the day. The stove was small. He's like, we've been cutting this damn ham <laughs> for three, four generations the same way. And because, nobody, asked, and the nobody asked a question about nope. why we're doing this. And we were just doing it over and over again. So that comes down to you evaluating and having someone ask, not even, maybe not someone externally, but you asking yourself, why do I do these things? Mm-hmm. Why do I think this way? Why am I why am I doing the same things over and over again? And you, Tony's one to challenge those type of things because, you know, my family's from Panama, but we have a lot of Caribbean backgrounds. So there's a lot of, if you want to say superstitions or certain things that we follow or say, don't do it. And he's like, but why? And I'm like, I don't, listen, I ask no questions. And I think you, as a person or the family, you don't see anything wrong with it. So you're like, why am I even questioning it? Like, there's no reason for me to know why. I just know that that's what we do or don't do. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's no pro- like there's no harm to it, right? That's the way you think of it. Like there's no harm happening. So why am I asking anybody why should I not or should I do this or should I not do this? You just know this is the way it is. But um when I heard that story, I definitely thought of you because it's like you'd be asking, like, okay, but why? But what is the reason behind her not stepping over the cat? Like whatever the so whatever let me give the superstition. You, let me give you guys is. an example, right? Because we're talking about <laughs> whatever talking about, it is. We're talking about values, we're talking about where you get your values of uh, Money, but everything at this point. Everything, yeah. <laughs> because that your money values come from your parents and everything else comes from them as well. So, mm-hmm. like, an example was don't sit a baby on the table. <laughs> and I thought that was foolish. I thought it was because the baby could fall and get hurt, which, <laughs> which makes sense to me. But there is a tradition or a saying in, my, my guy and his best in, in the family that said, if you set the baby on a table, the baby will grow up to be a thief. A thief, yeah. And I asked, why do you... Why how do you, does it connect? How does it connect? Because I'm just curious, like I'm not, I'm not downplaying what you guys are thinking because yeah. what you think is what you think. But I'm curious as to why. I want to well, know. That's what we probably should Google it because no one had a why. So I'm asking the person <laughs> that said it, and they said, "Oh, this, we've been doing this. This is what we do." We so my mother does it. I asked the mother, <laughs> "Oh, this is just what we do." I didn't have nobody else to ask. <laughs> but I'm asking everyone in the group. I'm like, "So can anyone tell me why we do this? It's just a thing we do." So I said, like, "Oh, okay." Now I'm challenging that because there is no reason why now I should they challenge say it. Now they if becomes a thief so 20 now, years from now. So the only way we know this is if we remember that I put Alani on the table and I still put but her on the table. But then even then you're like, is that really the reason she became a thief? Or <laughs> did she have values from her parents that made her a thief? <laughs> so it could be two different reasons. There's so many things. Yeah. It could be two different reasons in the family where she, why she, Alani becomes a thief. It could yeah. be the table or it could be she has thief tendencies from us. Yeah. 